Hey guys, hello. My name is Rebecca, AKA Vegan Bodega Cat, and I wanted to take you on an adventure with me. Today I wanna go try to find a sustainable razor, a more eco-friendly shaving option. Over the last year, I've been trying to cut down on waste. I'm not zero waste, so whoever's gonna hold me to that standard and then bash me for not being perfect, um, I'm not claiming to be zero waste. I still occasionally buy coffee in disposable cups, even though I do have a reusable coffee cup that I use like 95% of the time. I've made a lot of swaps and one of the swaps that I've been wanting to add is a razor. What has held me back from doing this earlier is about a year ago, I accidentally bought, instead of buying a six pack of razor heads, I bought a 12 pack of disposable razors. And that was also when I like first started becoming more aware of more sustainable ways to live my life. And so I ended up with 12 of these razors. They're the Daylogic brand from Rite Aid. I mean, I love them. They work great. And I only use around one per month. So 12 razors lasted me almost a year. And now I'm on my final razor and I'm looking to find a more sustainable replacement. I went on my Instagram and I asked you guys on there if you had any brands that you really liked and you gave me a really long list. So let's read through them really quick. So the suggestions I got were for Wowie, We Shave, Albatross, Vanderhagen, Preserve, Merker, Billy, Weishi, and Leaf Shave. I've looked a few of these up, not all of them. They were on the more expensive side. The one that I really thought was beautiful was like, $75 for the razor and some cartridges. Let me see, which was the one I really liked the design of? Ah, Leaf Shave. Look at how adorable this design is. Oh, there we go. So this design is so sleek and beautiful. But when I went to the website, I saw that it was $79 for a leaf razor, twig trimmer, and 20 blades. I know that zero waste razors last like forever, so it's more of an investment thing, but just $80 seems like so much to spend. I remembered that now that I've moved to Williamsburg, there's a shop near me called the Package Free Shop, and a few people told me that they have sustainable razors there. Additionally, I've been wanting to go check it out in general, just to check out the prices of some things. Also, I've been needing um, produce bags, maybe they have some there. So I looked it up on maps, and it's only a 16 minute walk from my new apartment. So today, I'm going to go walk those 16 minutes, just see if I can find a good razor, do a little bit of exploring, maybe get some reusable grocery bags, you know, the thin ones for produce, and I thought it would be really awesome to bring you guys along with me. But before we go, sorry, one more thing, I feel like this is a good video to uh, add this into. Our apartment building has... Um, has a compost program. And what my boyfriend and I do is we collect all of our compost in this Bustello can and when it's full, we just bring it downstairs and put it in the compost. Unfortunately, over the past few weeks that I've been living here, I've realized that a lot of people throw away their compost in plastic bags. And I don't understand why that is because they're taking the time to put their compost aside, you know, so they have to care. So then why do they add plastic to the compost after caring enough to put their compost aside? There's currently a sign on the compost bin saying, oh, please don't put plastic in the bin, blah, blah, blah. But it's like an entire page of like so many words. And I think if there was a more straight to the point sign, people would get the picture. So I made one. I hope the landlord doesn't mind that I'm gonna replace his sign. Are you ready for my beautiful graphic design work? Ta-da! It says, please no plastic bags in the compost bin. Contaminated compost gets thrown into landfills. And it has a big slash through the plastic bag just in case somebody doesn't speak English. So what I'm going to do is go downstairs and take out the compost, but also replace the landlord's sign with my sign. So let's go do that. So that's the landlord's sign. It's like 500 paragraphs. Nobody's gonna sit and read that. And um, can you see all the plastic in there? We're gonna try to take care of that. All right, hopefully that does something. I'll keep you updated on my Instagram if it helps with the plastic problem. All right, here we are. Okay. 
literally accidentally just found the razor section and that's what the price looks like they even have shaving bars slightly intimidated I'm not gonna lie whoops oh my goodness this is the one I showed you guys too I mean way much more beautiful but also like way much more expensive and I don't know which one I should go for they have like bulk soap and body wash and face oil okay not gonna lie I am NOT in a place in my life where I could spend $37 on a toilet brush but if you can good for you okay again I can't afford this but how cute are these lip balms they're so adorable but $24 no thanks Let's check out this coffee straw it's bendable and it's like small so you can put it in like coffee cup bowls that's kind of insane okay I might get this it's a bubble tea straw I mean how often do I drink bubble tea though All right, these are the bags I was talking about that I wanted to get. They are $4.95 each. I don't know. All right, so I spoke to a few of the associates and they made this one seem totally worth the $80, uh, partially because it pivots when you shave, ta-da, and partially because it has a lifetime warranty. So I'm basically just buying shaving for the rest of my life. So in my head, I'm kind of justifying it. Versus this one does not have a warranty and it doesn't pivot, so it's much easier for me to cut myself, and that kind of scares me. Another difference I forgot to mention is that the leaf razor has three blades, while the albatross only has one. All right, I'm doing it, guys. Okay. Okay. And there's a magnet. I'm slightly nervous about handling razors, not gonna lie. Don't be. Honestly, like it seems intimidating, but you see how fast I just did yeah. that. I didn't cut myself. You know, I have mixed feelings about the shop. It's mostly awesome. I love that it exists and I love what they stand for and all the products they have. Really amazing. However, some of the prices in there just made me swoon a little bit. I mean, I bought the razor. It's $80, that's kind of crazy. But it has a lifetime warranty, right? I just paid $80 to shave for the rest of my life. That's kind of justifiable, you know? However, like there was $24 lip balm and stuff like that that I just can't in a million years justify spending money on. Even though I know it's like better for the planet to buy like reusable lip balm containers or whatever they, the marketing point those lip balms had. I still can't. $24 for a lip balm is really insane. In short, I love it, but I'm not quite sure how it makes sustainable living reasonable for normal people. Kind of excited to try it, honestly. So here she is. Probably the most aesthetic looking razor I've ever seen. It already has the blades in it, and this makes me want to just go shave right now. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Let me see, do you have any hairs on my arm? Not really. It shaved. So I'm gonna shave with this. I'll come back and let you guys know what I thought about it. This way, if you're thinking about investing and it is an investment, then you'll know whether or not it was worth it for me. All right, I used it and I have opinion. My opinion is, I really like it. Uh, I did nick myself a little bit on my knee, but it's really small, it didn't even hurt. The only reason I realized it is because I saw a little drop of blood. But other than that, it's not much different than a regular razor. It does feel a little bit strange because you do shave like right here at the bottom of the thing. So like, I instinctively was putting it on my body like this to shave, but it's really like this is a little bit weird you know but that only took like a few minutes to get used to I shaved with like soap because I didn't have any shaving cream it's really like nice and heavy it feels super high quality would I recommend it so if you can afford 80 dollars 
I would suggest to go for it because other than like really inexpensive blades which you can get for like 10 cents each you're never gonna have to pay for a razor again and so $80 over I have like so many years of shaving left in my life like I'm 26 now probably gonna be shaving till I'm um, 76 maybe after that I won't care anymore let's just say I'm gonna shave till I'm 76 that's 50 years and that is 80 divided by 50 does that make it a dollar and 60 cents a year? 80 divided by 50 is 1.6. It's pretty worth it. But let's be realistic, you know, what are the chances I'm not gonna lose it? So if I have this for the next 20 years, it's $4 a year. If I only have it for the next 10 years, it's $8 a year. If I even only have it for the next five years, it's $16 a year, which is so much less than I would have paid if I was using conventional razors like these. So I think it's worth it in the long run if you have the money. If not, you can buy the Albatross ones. The main reason why I chose this one over the Albatross one is not because it's beautiful, that was definitely a contributing factor, but the main reason was that this one has a pivoting head, so it's much more like a regular razor to use, while the other one doesn't have a pivoting head, so you have to go through a little bit of a learning curve, learning like how to hold the razor and everything like that, and I just was lazy. But if you don't want to spend the $80 on this razor and you want to spend, I think it was like $24 on the other one, which is much more reasonable, and you have the patience for that learning curve, then go for it. The planet will thank you. And I think that's all I have to say. Maybe in a few months I can record an updated video for after I've used this razor for a few months. I'm sure I'll have a much more thorough review for you guys. Are there any other sustainable things that you think I should look into? Let me know in the comment section down below. I think that's all. Like if you like, subscribe if you want to subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram where I post every single day, I'll put my Instagram right here. And yeah, I will talk to you next time. Goodbye! A huge shout out to Jessica, Christina, Marlene, Osiris, Maya, Michelle, Kaylin, and Marielle. You guys help make these videos possible. If you want to become a Bodega Babe, check out the link to my Patreon in the description down below.